Welcome back. This is day two of our video. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our DOL. So go ahead and get out your packets. Like I said, you guys can either write in those packets or you can get out a lined piece of paper and you can jot them down on there. So let's take a quick look at both of these. The first one that we have has four different errors in it. So let's go ahead and, go, let's go ahead and read it first. This says, we seen a shark in our bathtub. Let me read that again. We seen a shark in our bathtub. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can pick up the um, errors right away. So go ahead and correct that one. And here's the next one. Was the water in the tank blue? Was the water in the tank blue? There are three mistakes on this one. Really take a good look at this punctuation at the end. We are now going to go ahead and continue our lesson on compound words. Now, yesterday we said that comp compound words is going to be one word plus another word that's going to equal a new word. So let me go ahead and let me go and show you here. Um, here's one word. We have the word home, and then I can also add the word work. Now I can go ahead and I can squeeze those together, and when I squeeze them together, I have a new compound word, and the word is homework. Okay. Let me give you guys another one. On this side, I have birth, and on this one, I have the word day. These are two separate words, but when I bring them together, when I squeeze them together, I have a brand new word. And what is that word? That's right, birthday, the day that we, we celebrate your birth, okay? So let's go over some other words right here, and these are our words that we went over yesterday. All right, so let's take a look. Gold, fish, goldfish, wash, cloth, washcloth, birth, plus day equals birthday. Run plus ways equals runways. Camp plus fire equals camp fire. Tooth plus brush equals toothbrush. Sun plus rise equals sunrise. Under plus ground equals underground. Sail plus boat equals sail bloat. Sail boat, not bloat. High plus way equals highway. Tug plus boat equals tugboat. And day plus light equals daylight. I'm gonna give you guys a second right now and I want you to go ahead and read over these next ones. Go ahead. Go ahead and get out your handy dandy reader notebook and you are going to turn to page 66. So go ahead and do that now. And once you are there, you will see all of our spelling words, which are all compound words. All right, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to read each of the book titles. So you're going to need to read each of the book title and you need to, uh, you guys need to throw in the word over here, these compound words that are going to complete that book title. Now, what are you going to have to do to do this uh, correctly? You're going to have to look for context clues. So let's go ahead and do the first one together. It says, teacher, my dog ate my blank. All right, you guys have heard this before. My dog ate my what? That's right, my homework. Now, there's a couple important things that you need to do. Since this is a title, since these are titles, we know that these are a special type of noun. They're called a proper noun. So what are we going to have to do since it's a proper noun? That's right. We're going to have to capitalize them. Every single word that we're going to be using from this, these are all important words here. So we are going to have to capitalize this because they're part of our proper noun, which is a title of a book. So you guys said homework. So I'm going to go ahead and find homework. There's our word homework. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Now, like I said, I need to capitalize that H. All right, so capital H. O-M-E-W-O-R-K. So teacher, my dog ate my homework. I'm gonna go ahead and cross that out. Okay, let's go and do number two together. Using sunblock to avoid getting blank. To avoid getting what? Okay, 
What would it be? What, what, why would you use sunblock? To, yeah, that's right, to avoid getting sunburned. Okay, so once again, I have to capitalize that. So I'm gonna capitalize the S, S-U-N, sun, that's our first word. And the second word is burn, B-U-R-N. And this is past tense. How do we know it's past tense? Because there's an E-D. So the title is using sunblock to avoid getting sunburned. I'm gonna go ahead and have you do numbers three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 right now. And don't forget, down here you have a review. It says choose a review word, someone or cannot. And then you're gonna use it in your very own book title. Now, what do you have to do again since it's a book title? That's right, you have to capitalize the important first letters, the words, okay? All right, the challenge. Choose a challenge word, either scorekeeper or everybody. Once again, you're gonna use it in a book title. Do not forget to capitalize the first letters of the words. All right, do that now. This week for fluency, we're gonna be talking about accuracy. So I want you guys to go ahead and get out those darts. And when I count to three, you're gonna throw them and you're gonna see if you can get a bullseye. All right, ready? One, two, and three. Ow! I'm, I probably shouldn't have walked in the way, huh? Oh man, that really hurt. Let's try that again, okay? Go ahead and get out those, go ahead and get out those darts. Go ahead, when I say three, go ahead and hit this bullseye. One, two, three. Nicely done. All right, so when we, as readers, we need to be accurate. We need to be like that person throwing that dart. We need to make sure that every word that we read is the actual word that is, that is written down here, okay? Let's take a look here. This says, good readers think about whether the words they read make sense. Have you guys ever been reading something and you read the whole page and there's one word that you just do not know what it is, so you just kind of make something up? And when you get to the end of that page, you're like, that does not make sense. All right, you guys should have an alarm in your head going, wah, wah, wah. that is wrong, that is wrong, wah, wah, wah. right? So let me give you guys an example, okay? Uh, let's say I am uh, reading a story and I'm at the zoo, okay? So here's what I say. All right, um, I am at the zoo right now and I am at a cage. And inside the cage, I see a lot of money. First off, I'm thinking, why is there money in these cages, all right? And the, this money keeps going, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. I'm like, what in the world? Money doesn't go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. So then something goes off in my brain, eh, 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 that is wrong. And then I have to tell myself, a mon a money doesn't do that, but monkey does. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my story and I'm gonna read it again. And instead of saying money, I'm gonna say monkey. Have you guys ever done something like that before? Okay, so let me go ahead and finish this. When a sentence doesn't sound right, they can self-correct, just like I did, right? I, I turned money into monkey. It was supposed to, it's supposed to be monkey, not money. And you can do this by looking back to see if they misread any words, and then we need to correct our mistakes. So as you guys are reading your AR books at home, make sure that when you guys get done reading a page or, or even a paragraph, make sure that you're reading all those words correctly. And if there's, if there's a word that you just don't know, look that word up on Google, maybe ask a parent or an older sibling, they'll be able to help you with this. We are now gonna get started on our story, Life on the Ice. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and open up our uh, reading books to page 164 and page 165. All right, so go ahead and do that now, and we're gonna go over our vocab. Our first word is shelter. What is a shelter? Well, a shelter is a place to live or take cover. Think about your houses. That's a shelter. Uh, think about if it's raining outside, not, not storming, but if it's raining outside, you might find shelter underneath a tree so that you guys don't get wet. You might even find shelter under an umbrella, okay? So a tent can make a good shelter for an explorer. It is a good place to keep warm. Have you guys ever gone camping and stayed in one of these before? Yeah. All right, our next word is colony. Say colony. A colony is a group of people or the same kind of animals living together. Okay, so there are a lot of animals when they live together. It's called a colony. Some people take trips to study a colony 
or large group of penguins. Do you guys know where penguins live? If you said Alaska, that's wrong. That's right, they live in Antarctica, okay? All right, our next word is constant. Say constant, very good. Constant means not changing, okay, constant. Okay, so steady or constant rain can make hiking trails slippery and difficult to use. We've had a lot of constant rain lately. I, I am ready for some constant sunshine. That means sunshine that just stays around for a long, long time. How about you? Our next word is wilderness. The wilderness is a wild area of land where very few people live. And we're going to be learning about Antarctica this week. And Antarctica is, is, a, is a, a vast wilderness. There's not many people that live there at all. Even Alaska, there's many places in Alaska where it's just wilderness. That means not many people live there. Explorers often travel through wilderness, wilderness or unsettled areas. Our next word is climate. Go ahead and say climate. Very nice. Climate describes the average or typical weather in a particular place. Think about the climate that we have. Right now, we are in spring, so our climate is a little bit different than it was in the winter. Okay, In the winter, it's usually really cold. Um, it's really sometimes icy, uh, but our climate now, it's going to be starting to warm up. Now, we're still going to have maybe some snow. I sure hope not, but we still might have some of that. Okay, um, and then once it gets to summer, it's going to be our climate's going to be really warm. Okay, so boaters must avoid ice when exploring regions with a very cold climate because it gets really icy there. Our next word is region. Say region. A region is a large section of land on Earth. This overgrown jungle is in a hot and rainy region or area. We live in a region where we have a lot of fields, a lot of crops. Now, if you were to go down to Tennessee, there's going to be a large region of mountains. Next word is unexpected. Unexpected. If I were to have somebody go through my door right now, that would be unexpected because I think I'm the only one in this school right now. That would be a little unexpected. Okay? Have you ever been scared before? Somebody scares you? That was unexpected. You were not expecting that. So something unexpected happens without any warning at all. The unexpected view from the top surprised these hikers. It was unexpected. They were not expecting that view that they were given. Our next word is gliding. Say gliding. Gliding means moving smoothly with little effort. This looks like a ton of fun, but it also looks like something that would freak me out. I don't know if I would want to do this or not. Gliding or moving smoothly through the air is an exciting way to explore. Think about birds. When they're, when they're up in the air, sometimes they are just gliding along, right? That just seems so peaceful to me. Our next word is overheated. Oh, this is one of, this is a, um, this is a compound word. If you are overheated, you are too hot to be safe. Have you guys ever been outside before when it's maybe 90 or 100 degrees and you're maybe playing football or you're playing any other sport or you're just running around and you start getting dizzy and really thirsty? You're probably overheated. If this ever happens, you need to go tell a parent or a grandparent or whoever you're with and tell them some of your symptoms because we want to make sure that you're being safe out there. So smart explorers find shade and drink water when they feel overheated. And let's go to our last word. Our last word is layer. A layer is one thickness of something. Okay, so I know in Miss Hennigan's room, you guys have learned about the different layers of our soil. Okay, there's different layers of the ground. Okay, all right, so a layer of ice must be several inches thick before it is safe to cross. And in your story... Uh, that we're going to be reading today and tomorrow, they're going to be talking about taking ice samples, and you're going to be able to see the different layers of the ice, which comes from different time periods. Go ahead and turn to your next page, which is page 166, and we're going to be learning about main ideas and details. It is so important that when you are reading that you understand what the main idea of the story is. Now, in some stories like these informational texts, you're going to have many main ideas. 
okay? You're gonna be giving headings, and in those headings, you're gonna have a bunch of paragraphs, sometimes, sometimes two or three, but sometimes you might have a lot more, and it's very important that you understand the main idea of what that author is trying to share with you in that section, okay? So may, as you read Life on the Ice, look for the main ideas. What are main ideas? They are the most important points that the author is making that they're trying to share with you. Okay. Now, with those main ideas, there's going to be some supporting details, and that's kind of like the evidence for your main idea. Okay. So these include facts and examples that provide more information. Now, it's important that you note how this how this text evidence supports the main ideas, and you guys can use a graphic organizer like this one to help you out while you're reading this. Maybe you guys find a main idea, uh, maybe about penguins. Maybe they're talking about how uh, penguins uh, eat, okay? Now, let's say it says that penguins eat small fish. Now, you guys would have to have some supporting details. So maybe on, pay on one of these pages, it actually talks about how they, how they go through the water uh, to find fish. That would be a supporting detail for your main idea, okay? And then you guys want to find other ones as well that can go with your main idea. Okay, and when you guys get done with it, I'm going to have you go ahead and read this page. It's all about climate. So go ahead and read this right now, and then you can go right into your story. Now, in Google Classroom, you can find this video here. Um, this is Life on the Ice. You guys can, um, if you'd like to, you can just read it on your own, but sometimes it's really nice having somebody read it to you. It's about an eight minute long video and I have it in Google Classroom right now. So go ahead and you're, you're not gonna read this whole thing. So today you're gonna go ahead and read the very first half of this story. You're gonna read pages 168 to page 175. And when you get all done with that, you're going to wanna go ahead and start answering your story questions. These are going to be due this Friday. And you're, this time you're actually gonna be doing it a little bit different. It's the same setup, but you're gonna be typing in the answers and then I'm gonna be able to get those so that I can actually grade those. So you might wanna get started on your story questions tonight. Yesterday, we started learning about adverbs and what adverbs do. Adverbs are really neat because what they do to your sentence, they make your sentence more exact. They tell, they tell your reader more about what is going on. So if you were just to say, uh, Mr. Murray was walking through the grocery store, instead of just saying walking, you guys can add an adverb to that. Tell me more about how Mr. Murray is walking. And we're going to answer that by saying how. Okay, so if I'm really looking for something and I, I want to be the first one there, uh, like for instance, maybe I'm looking for toilet paper, you know, it's in high demand right now. I'm not going to slowly chase after it, okay? I'm going to quickly, I'm going to run after it because there's only a couple of packs left, okay? So yesterday we talked all about how. That we answered how somebody might walk or how somebody might eat or how somebody might toss something or how something or how someone might catch something or how someone might kick something, okay? And remember, all of these are gonna end in L-Y, okay? So let's talk, about, um, let's talk about me throwing something. I can quickly throw it. I can slowly throw it. I can crazily throw it, okay? I can sadly throw it. <laughs> I can angrily throw it, okay? And there's many other different ways that I can do this. Can you think of some other ones that end in L-Y? Okay, so we know that adverbs can ask how, but they can also ask something else. They can also ask when. So when did something happen? Okay, so I'm still going to be talking about how I throw the ball. Throw is going to be my verb that I'm going to add an adverb to. And you guys can see up here, you guys can see some of the adverbs that are going to ask when. Okay, so I throw the ball. When do I throw the ball? Now. I throw the ball now. Okay, I threw the ball first thing in the morning. Okay, I threw the ball last thing in the afternoon, 
early, early this morning, I throw the ball. Yesterday, yesterday, I threw the ball. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to throw the ball. Today, today, I'm going to throw the ball. Later on, I'm going to throw the ball. I regularly throw the ball. Often, I throw the ball. I never throw the ball. Monthly, I throw the ball. That just means once a month. And I always throw the ball. That's something I'm always doing. So all of these ask, when do I throw something? And remember, throw is my verb. And you can do any verb. And you can throw any of these adverbs in with those verbs. Now, adverbs can also ask where. Okay? Where did something happen? Where did this verb happen? Okay? So uh, let's go ahead and talk about, now I'm going to say juggling. Juggling is going to be my verb, okay? So where do I juggle? I juggle right here. Where do I juggle? I actually juggle over there. I juggle over there. Next one, where do I juggle? I juggle everywhere. There's times I juggle here. There's times I juggle there. I juggle everywhere. Where do you juggle? Um, somewhere. I'm not going to tell you, but somewhere I juggle. Okay, where do you juggle? I juggle in my classroom. Where else? I juggle inside of my classroom. All right, let's say there's a big hole in the ground. I don't know why there'd be a big hole in the ground, but maybe underground I juggle, okay? And then I get out of that hole, and when I'm out of there, then I juggle some more, okay? Maybe I can go outside. I can juggle outside. Where do I juggle? Outside. Upstairs, maybe in my attic. I'm going to be up there juggling, okay? I can juggle upstairs. Or I can go downstairs, and I can juggle down there. So remember, there's three different ways uh, for our verbs. There's three questions that I can ask. I can ask how, when, and where. All right? So now I need you all to turn in your reader notebooks to page 59. So go ahead and do that now. And that's this page right here. And this says that adverbs can tell how an action happens. They can also tell where and when something happens. Adverbs can come before or after the verbs that they describe. So let's take, let's take a, an example here. The first example says, the scientist flew in an airplane. But I'm going to ask you, where did they fly? Okay? The scientist flew there in an airplane okay next one they cleaned the airplane when did they clean the airplane when did they then our right, first thing we need to do we always need to make sure that we're reading our directions so the first direction says write the adverb that tells about each underlying verb so that's the first thing that we need to do okay so you're going to have two things you're going to write on here and then it says then write where or when to show how each adverb describes the verbs. So let's take a look at number one. It says, it's too snowy to leave tonight. So the first thing says, write the adverb that tells about each underlying verb. So what is the adverb? It's too snowy to leave, to leave when? That's right, to leave tonight. So I'm going to go and circle tonight. I'm going to write that on there. Then I actually asked that question. What did I ask? That's right, I asked when. Okay. When is it too snowy to leave? Tonight. Okay, so let's do number two. First, we will make a shelter. Okay, so what is helping us with make? That's right, first. Okay, so first is the adverb here. And it's, it's going to be asking what? When will we make a shelter? When will we make a shelter? We'll make it first. All right, go ahead and do numbers three through eight now. So we just got done talking about when and where. So today I'm going to have you guys write three sentences that go over when, and then tomorrow I'm going to have you guys do the other one with where. Okay. So here's an example. It says the unicorn played outside. Here's the question that you're going to need to ask. When did the unicorn play outside? So I could say yesterday, or I could say today. Okay, so I could say the, uni the unicorn played outside yesterday, or there's another way I could say that. I could say yesterday, 
the unicorn blade outside. So go ahead and get out a piece of paper right now and you're gonna go ahead and jot these down. Remember, you can pause this whenever you need to so that you guys can jot it down. And I will have it written down right down here, okay? All right, so the first one says, the rock was sitting on the car. The rock was sitting on the car. Here's the question that we need to ask. When was the rock sitting on the car? When was the rock sitting on the car? When was it? All right, here's your next one. The clock made a dinging sound. The clock made a dinging sound. Okay, so here's the question I need to ask you. When did the clock make a dinging sound? When did the clock make a dinging sound? Here's your last one. A scientist walks on the ice. A scientist walks walks on the ice. Here's the question. When does a scientist walk on the ice? When does a scientist walk on the ice? And remember, you guys can turn to pages 194 and 195 if you guys want to learn a little bit more about adverbs. I hope you guys have a great day.